In this video we're going to be looking at heat engines and the Carnot cycle as well as the efficiency of each of them. But this one here is cute, so please to heat you, it looks like he's smiling. Alright, so let's look at this. We have a heat engine, which is a cyclic gas process, which means it's something that sort of continues in a cycle. It keeps repeating itself, like something happens in like a, a car motor, for example, as a cyclic a heat engine. So it performs useful work by converting energy to work. This is the idea. Okay, so how does it actually uh, work, conceptually at least? Well, a hot reservoir is going to have some sort of, uh, you know, thermal energy, Q, H, and it's going to have a temperature, let's say T, hot. And by contrast, we're going to have this cold reservoir, which has, let's say, Q, C for cold, and T, cold. So what happens is this. This hot reservoir right here, it transfers some energy over here, Q, H. It goes through this magical engine that does some magic. Now it dumps you know, the rest of it, for example, as QC, but what's important is it actually uh, performs some useful work. So this is the part that we actually care about, is this one here. So what is actually done here? We can say it's, you know, useful work. And it's gonna be related, remember, to the uh, difference in energy here. So in other words, QH minus QC. This is a good way to look at how it really goes. So this right here is the piece then that we're going to need, is this one right here. So what is an example of a cyclic gas process? Well, it could be if this is a PV diagram, I don't know, maybe it goes like this, and then maybe like this, and maybe like this. I'm just trying to draw straight, but I'm not very good at it. So let's say it goes like this, like this. See, it repeats. It goes from here. Let's say we call this right here A. It goes from A to B, then to C, then back to A, then to B, then to C, back to A, then to B, C, A. Basically, it keeps going like this. And we could also define it. We could have said, oh, this is an isothermal, let's say, expansion from A to B. Then we can say this is an isobaric compression from B to C. Then we can say it's an isovolumetric change, C to A, and so on. The key thing I want you to know, though, is this right here, that the net change in internal energy, remember which one is internal energy? That's delta U is going to be zero. So the net change in internal energy in the whole cycle is going to be zero. Because no matter what temperature it started off at, in this case, let's say it stays at the same temperature, then maybe it goes down in temperature, then maybe it goes up in temperature, but it has to be back the same where it was. So this is a key piece you're going to need. So now we can define the efficiency of any old heat engine. We're going to use this uh, Greek symbol right here. By the way, uh, this is an important piece of here. This, we don't mean viscosity, okay? Because I know we also use um, <laughs> uh, this same symbol for this viscosity here. We don't mean viscosity. We mean efficiency, okay? This is really important. We want the efficiency of a heat engine is actually just equal to this. So it's the useful work over the input energy. Now, how do you actually use this? There's an important thing you can do. Remember I just talked about the useful work is just related to this change here, QH minus QC. So we're going to write that down. So QH minus QC. And divide that by the input energy, which is just QH. So this right here is a piece I think that's actually quite important. You're welcome to uh, use this. This is, I think, the you know, practical one that we can use. So now as we keep going, then let's look at what's a Carnot cycle. A Carnot cycle uh, is the most efficient theoretical heat engine. Now, it's not possible in real life, though, because there's always some energy loss, but this is how a Carnot cycle goes. From A to B, it's going to start off with an isothermal expansion, then adiabatic expansion, then isothermal compression, and then an adiabatic compression to go back. And it goes A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, and so on. So we're going to say, then, that the efficiency of the Carnot cycle, then, remember, it's just going to be the useful work over input energy. We did this before, didn't we? So let me just, I'm basically just rewriting all of this like we've just seen just before, right? We saw it was QH minus QC over QH. But hey, if I do this right here, I can also convert these to temperatures instead. I can say TH minus TC, the temperature of the cold, divided by TH. If I put these together and look at this, that means I can split them up. I can say, hey, that's TH over TH. I mean, they're both divided by TH. All that minus TC over TH. I'm just making a common denominator here, so to speak. The reason I do this is that hopefully you can see this is why the THs cancel out. You get just a 1. So you get 1 minus TC over TH. And that's the equation we have here. That's the derivation. Why it's 1 minus 
TC over TH. Now, you didn't have to know how to do this derivation because of this right here, you get this in your data booklet. So hooray. So this is the efficiency of a Carnot cycle. It goes like this, where TC is the temperature of the cold reservoir. And what do you think we need to do for, um, for units? We're going to be putting Kelvin here and Kelvin here. So here's the key thing right here, is that in order to have the efficiency be the biggest we can, we essentially want this term right here to be zero, don't we? Because we don't want to go one minus zero. So how do you make this zero? You either make this number right here as small as you can, or you make this number here as big as you can. So that's sort of, that's how you get that last term right there. So that's how you, you basically, how do you get the best efficiency? The best efficiency is going to be like this, right? So if you can make TH as big as possible, and at the same time make TC as small as possible, this essentially becomes kind of zero, and that's why this works. So let's do an example with this. We have a power plant with a Carnot heat engine. That's why I put this joke right here by XKCD. What a great web comic. It says, check out my new Carnot cycle. Neat. How fast does it go? Oh, it depends on how cold it is outside. Get it? Because the efficiency of a Carnot is 1 minus TC over... Oh, it's cute. I think it's actually quite clever. So let's look at this. We want the efficiency of this power plant. Well, that means we need efficiency. Carnot. Let's just start off with what we need, right? We need to know 1 minus TC over T. H. That just comes from this equation right here. Well, then all we need to know then is just what is Tc. But keep in mind, we need them not in Celsius, we need them in Kelvin. So Tc in Kelvin, what's that going to be? Well, it's going to be 372, that's the cold temperature in Celsius. We're going to add that to uh, 273. So that's going to be, uh, what is that, 645 Kelvin? And then for the T hot in Kelvin, what's that going to be? It's going to be 651 plus 273, which is, what's that, 924 Kelvin. And that means we have everything we need, right? We just need to go, all right, that means the efficiency of the Carnot cycle is going to be, well, just 1 minus uh, the cold one, which was 645 all that divided by 924. I'll just use my calculator for that. It's going to be 1 minus, in, uh, as a fraction here, go 9, uh, sorry, 645 over 924. I end up with, well, this answer right here, which I want as a decimal, so it's going to be 0 0.301948. 3,01948. Now that means I can say then that here, let me just put it like this right here. I'll do it to three significant figures, so I'll say 0 0.302, um, which I could also say is 30.2% efficient, if you want to put it as a percent, because you just move the decimal over by two. Either of these are here would be fine. This is the efficiency of this particular Carnot engine. So there we go. We've done an example of how to do this, right? It's just a matter of using the numbers very carefully, very slowly. And what did we learn from this? Well, we learned that cyclic processes, the efficiency of those are here. It's all related to um, how this right here works. We're doing um, useful work depending on the difference right here in uh, thermal energy, which is also related to the temperature as well. That's why we have this hot versus cold.